Yeah, you got Gave me the thumbs up, so whenever you're okay. ready. All right, let's do it. Okay. Good morning. Let God be praised. Let God be praised. This is a happy day. If you don't mind standing for this gathering music, it will be really fun because you sing better when you stand up. <laughs> so, um, if you sing soprano, do this. Amen, amen. <clears throat> Good. Good. Keep it going. Now, if you sing alto, it's like this. Amen, amen. Come on. If you sing tenor, it's like, amen, amen, come on. Oh, yeah. And if you're a bass, it's amen, amen, come on. Ah, good. Go on. Now, here's what we're going to do. I will, sing the, I will sing the verses, and after each phrase I sing, you'll sing the amen, amen. And we'll have a little, a little percussion. We don't have a drum here, so we'll have a little hand clap percussion. Let's keep the going. Uh-huh. Good. Here we go. From the fount of every blessing, oh, to my heart to sing thy grace. Mercy never ceasing. Ha! Oh, call for songs of loudest praise. Oh, 
take and steal it. We'll seal it for thy courts above. These people have got so much soul in them, you're going to be blown away. <laughs> you are my sister, even though I hardly know. my brother even when I do not show you you're in my family in Christ you're kin to me
just a minute now, and if it's okay, if it's okay, if it's okay, let's um, explore the quiet for just this moment. Well, it's a shame to have to break the silence, but good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is so good to gather together in the name of Christ. And my name is Charlie. I'm the senior pastor here at Memorial. And myself, along with all of my clergy colleagues here today, welcome you to this special service of worship together. The psalmist says, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. How good and pleasant it is. Amen. We're so glad that you're here today. It's our hope and it's our prayer in everything that we do that you know and you sense the closeness of God's presence closely and that you have come to church today with hearts and minds that are open to listen for the voice of Jesus as he speaks into all of our lives. A couple of things that are going to help us get going with that at the very beginning of our service are, first of all, to let you know if you're here with young children today and if those children will be going out as part of our children's programming later on in the service, and if you're not a regular here at Memorial. So if you're visiting with children today, I hope that you got a clipboard on the way in and there is a purple card on that. That just registers your children um, here for the day and it makes pickup an awful lot safer and an awful lot easier at the end of our morning together. So if you're here with children and you got a clipboard, please take time to fill that out. And when the children go later, if you'll give those to Miss Sarah. Sarah, wave your hand at the back. Thank you. Sarah will be glad to receive those from you. If you did not get a clipboard and you need a purple uh, card or piece of paper, please let one of our uh, uh, ushers or greeters know, and we have some spares of those at the very back of the room. Please go ahead and do that today. The second thing that is really important to do is to uh, welcome the very special visitors that we have here to help lead through our worship today. I believe you've already met Mr. Ken Miedema, um, who just led us in worship. <laughs> And uh, I told Ken yesterday, the last time I saw him was 20 years ago. Uh, we were in, uh, in, uh, at a conference, and uh, he, was, he was leading us in worship there, and it was a memorable moment for me. I also want to welcome uh, Bishop Will Willimon, uh, who is here as our preacher today. And we are honored to have you among us um, and to bring a, a word to us today, Bishop Willimon. We are thankful that you're here. Of course, thank you. Yeah. I said already, this is a unique service. We have uh, certainly four churches that have uh, been pulling this service together. I know we have some other churches represented here today, and it is good to be together in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so we are going to continue and worship now, and Pastor Rachel is going to come forward and welcome the light of Christ.
It's on. I invite you to stand as you are able. We start worship with the light of Christ. We welcome the light of Christ into our space because as a community, as a whole church, we know that we do not do this alone. Everything that we do, we do with the guidance of Christ. And so as the kids come forward with that light, we welcome Christ into this space knowing that we are constantly in the presence of Jesus. Thank you. And I invite you as we bring this to the table to also recognize that the peace of Christ is always with us. So I invite you to turn and show signs of peace to your neighbor by saying, peace be with you. As we prepare for our call to worship, I invite you to be ready in your first line of the call to worship to be ready to say your name as Jesus called to you. Let's join together in our call to worship. Jesus comes alongside us and calls us by name. Jonah, A simple call. A hard call. And we look around to see who else Jesus could be talking to. And we look around to see the trappings of the life we know. It's hard to leave our nets and walk away from the lake. But we have come this far to this place where we can listen and be transformed. And now we will continue worshiping as Ken leads us in music. One of the big words that we have played with this weekend is the word together. And so I have a children's song for all the kids between the ages of hmm and hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and there only is one word that you have to sing, and it's the word together. I'll show you how the song goes. Say it's great to be here with you And I'll tell you now what we're gonna do We're gonna sit right down and sing together So every time we come together We'll do that together, here we go I'm starting from the beginning Hey, it's great to be here with you And I'll tell you now what we're gonna do We're gonna sit right down and sing Right down and sing. You can hear the happy sound of music all around. There is music in the breeze and music in the trees. You've got music in your body and music in your heart. All you've got to do is open up and let it start. All the, all the kids who are younger than 11. If you're younger than 11, I want you to sing together this time, and all of us big old people are going to listen to you, okay? All the kids, if you're younger than 11, here we go. Say, it's great to be here with you, and I'll tell you now what we're going to do. We're going to sit right down and sing. Whoa! Okay, if you're younger, if you're younger than 11, say, aho, hello, hello, 
Hello? Okay, if you're younger than 11, say together. Ready? You guys. Let's go. Uh, all right. If you're, um, if you're younger than 90. <laughs> one more time. Say, it's great to be here with you. And I'll tell you now what we're going to do. We're going to sit right down. This is here and now. 
enough in God's presence that we bow and so we sing as we look about this place all these cousins sisters, brothers singing of God's grace on this Sunday, Sunday happy Sunday Sunday, Sunday happy one more time Sunday, Sunday happy Sunday Sunday, Sunday happy day Amen. Amen. Oh, we can do better than that. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for what he's done thus far. If you believe that you feel the Holy Spirit in this place, give God some praise today. Amen and amen. It is now time that we can affirm our faith with our Apostles' Creed. Will you stand with me? And it reads, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. All right, it's that time, friends. It's time for the kids to come on down, and hopefully you'll come even if you're shy. I promise we'll have a great time. And I need to always do my good morning. Good morning. Uh, today I have some special friends with me. I have Mother Rachel from St. Peter's Church. Hello, St. Peter's Episcopal Church. And we also have Miss Doris here from First Presbyterian. You're welcome. Yes, I'm so excited that you're all here today. All right, so as we get started, we're going to hear scripture today from the book of Matthew. All right? And Mother Rachel's going to talk to you about that story. It's a very special story. It's about Jesus is going to call the fishermen. Okay. Hey, I see you too. He's going to call Andrew and... It says Simon in the scripture, but we know him as Peter, because sometimes they like to confuse us in the Bible and change names. Okay? And he's also going to call James and John. He's going to call the fishermen. And he calls them right off the boat with the nets in their hands. And I don't like to guess a lot about what people were thinking, but I think I can guess that those four disciples did not expect to be called by Jesus that morning. Can you imagine being called by Jesus right now if he suddenly came? Could you? No, but he might. And the disciples heard him, and they immediately put down their nets, and they followed Jesus. They didn't go, oh, come on, I've got some fish to catch here. I'm busy. Can you not see? No, they said, oh, wow, and they immediately followed Jesus. And that's sometimes we have to remember that Jesus can call us at any moment, and sometimes we might have to put something down, but we should always be listening for Jesus' call so that it, when we hear it, we can go, yes, Lord. Good morning. You have to look both ways, don't you? That way, this way, that way, this way. I'm going to say a prayer for us this morning, and I want you to join me, okay? Dear God, we are so thankful, we are so thankful. 
that you have called us to be your disciples in this time and place. Thank you for Jesus who came to save us all. Be in our hearts and mind as we try to follow you. Amen. And now we're going to be going to Children's Church and Mr. Eric. And Mr. Miguel are back at the back, and I'm going too. And so is Mother Rachel, and so is Miss Sarah. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. So today's offering will be directed to the Barnabas Center which has been delivering help and hope to individuals and families in need throughout Nassau County since 1986. Barnabas's vision is that every individual will have the opportunity to lead a healthy and productive life, thereby strengthening our entire community. I'm honored to serve on the board of the Barnabas Center, and we see firsthand that the need in Fernandina and Nassau County is great and it's growing. This includes people who are unhoused, people who are uninsured or underinsured, and lately, more and more people who don't qualify for assistance through government grants. So people who live above the poverty line and are employed but are income constrained and asset limited. And all of that is important. But above any of that, the reason we give is because it is Jesus who calls us. Jesus who gave himself for us. Jesus who said it's more blessed to give than to receive. So remember that call. And remember what St. Teresa of Avia taught us many years ago. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. And though he didn't say it quite so eloquently, I just remember that St. Paul said that each one of you should give what they have decided in their heart, because God loves, do you remember what he said? A cheerful giver. What does God love? A giver. What is it? A cheerful giver. I think we're ready to take the offering now. <laughs> the psalmist said, I will raise my eyes to the mountains. Will my help come down from the mountains? Now, in, ancient, in the ancient Hebrew world, all the peoples around who were serving false gods, all those temples of those false gods were up on the hill. So the psalmist looks up to the hill. Kind of an interesting metaphor when we talk about Washington, D.C., we talk about up on the hill. <laughs> Will my help come down from the hill? No. My help comes from Jehovah.
Friends, let us turn our hearts and go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, it has been a week of joy and heartache. We give thanks that you have been with us through it all. We celebrate the joy of our community coming together to worship and to learn together. We thank you for the words spoken by Bishop Willimon and written and sung by Ken Miedema. We pray that the togetherness we share as your people would last not only this weekend, but in our lives moving forward. As we celebrate the joy of this community coming together, we pray for places that are torn apart. We especially pray today for the people of Lewiston, Maine, as they continue to deal with the trauma and aftermath of another mass shooting. We ask you, God, to help us support them with our love and prayers. Help us know how to be people of peace, not violence. Hear our prayers for places in your world where violence and war are the norm. We pray especially for those in Israel and Gaza, as innocent people are caught in the crossfire. For Ukraine, where war still is being waged. We pray for people who are displaced from homes, work, school, and their lives. We ask you to send an end to warfare and turn swords into plowshares. Send aid to those who need it, comfort the traumatized, and inspire leaders to find a peaceful way forward. We pray for this community, O oh God. We sometimes feel more divided than united in our lives together. Guide your leaders to do your will, to do what is best for all of your people. Help us to come together to be a community of welcome and not one of division. We pray today for our elected leaders, for the president, representatives and senators, state legislators, county and city commissioners, and all those who govern our lives. Inspire them to lead us in ways that promote your kingdom and lead to the world that you imagine for us. Give your people a spirit of kindness and forbearance towards one another. Hear our prayers for the homeless, the ill, those who are unemployed or underemployed. We lift up those who are ill in body, mind or spirit. We ask your healing mercies flow to those who need them. Support caregivers, teachers, parents, children caring for parents, and all who need your mercies. We name them now in our hearts in a moment of silence. Hear our prayers, O Lord, as we pray together the prayer your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Say these words, healer of our every ill, of our every Ill. Light, of each light of each tomorrow, grant us peace beyond our fears, hope for each tomorrow, Ho uh, hope beyond our sorrow, sorry, hope, hope beyond, beyond our sorrow. sorrow. Hope beyond our sorrow. Now, I'm going to ask the sopranos to sing that melody so that you'll have it in your heads and in your hearts because I want you to sing it in your hearts while we sing it with our mouths. So just Sopranos, if you'll sing that for us, please. Here we go. Sing it with us, won't you, in your hearts. Here we go.
Thank you, all musicians. Mr. Miedema, that was lovely. We're going to turn our attention to Matthew's gospel now and hear these words from chapter 4, verses, four, verses 18 through 23. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, meaning Jesus, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. Been wonderful being in your town this weekend and getting to be with your clergy. I had met with your clergy before in preparation for here. What a wonderful thing, the cooperation of the clergy, the collegiality they've and the work you're doing together. We've had a a, a great weekend and it's been it's great to be back with Ken Made about working again. If I if I had Ken backing me up with music, I wouldn't be stuck in Durham. I would be out on the West Coast at a mega church. Uh, it's the only thing holding me back is Ken doesn't want to work with me every Sunday. Uh, but the, um, at Duke, over the years, from time to time, I've taught a class, Jesus, the most interesting person in the world. And in the, what I do to start the class, I tell the students, before our first meeting, I want you to read, start to finish, the Gospel of Mark. And it, it's short. It's, and uh, it, even if you don't, if, even if you know something about Jesus, just try to go with your first impressions and all, and we'll talk about it. First class, we get together. And... Um, I asked them, uh, I said, now Mark says, I'm going to tell you about Jesus Christ, who is the Messiah, who is the Son of God. And then uh, I, I say to the group, now, uh, uh, what, what did you find interesting as you read through the Gospel of Mark? And one of the students says, um, you know, I was kind of bothered. I mean, you know, says in the beginning, he's the son of God. And, uh, but then the first thing he does is he calls, after he's baptized, he calls these yokels that, uh, to, I said his disciples, he said, e yeah, wh whatever. And, and he said, he <laughs> called them to do it with him. I mean, like, uh, if he's the son of God and if he wants to change the world, how come he doesn't just change the world? How comes he needs these? And he said, you know, you expect them to be dumb in the beginning, but they're dumb all the way to the end. <laughs> they never get the point. And I said, I guess you'd, you, uh, you, you'd have, this is the way Jesus does business. But, but it, was a, it was a moment, a marvelous moment to remember what, a, what an unusual thing it is, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, to say, 
I, I'm going to save the world from itself, but I'm not going to ever do that alone. Whatever Jesus wants to do in the world, it's kind of a wonder that he chooses to do it with us. He chooses to do it together. Jesus saves. How? From the very beginning of every gospel, you heard it this morning, whatever he does, he, he refuses to get started doing it without first convening, assembling, calling, congregating. It's, uh, it's called church. What a way to accomplish what you want to do if you're God to us, church. And be honest, that it can be a challenge following Jesus. You know that stuff about love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you and turn the other cheek. And that's hard. But sometimes the hardest part of being saved by Jesus is to have to get saved together. Uh, we have to go as a, a group, church. Uh, follow me. And that's amazing when you really hear that in your life for the first time. Follow me. But he doesn't just say, follow me. He also says, follow me. With Matthew and Bartholomew and Peter and Mary, uh, spoiler alert, after the scripture we heard this morning, uh, if it, uh, things don't go all that well for them as a group. There is misunderstanding, there is division, there is disagreement, argument, you, you get to the cross, there at the Last Supper, they'd say, I'll, I'll follow you wherever you... Well, when the soldiers came, uh, the going got rough. They all fled individually into the darkness. But then, what's the first thing Jesus does? The first day of his resurrected life, he returns to them. And, and he reconvenes them. He returns to them and he says, hey, where were you guys <laughs> there on Golgotha? I had a pretty good view from where I was. <laughs> I didn't see any of you. What was all that? Oh, I'll stick by you. No. He doesn't say that. He, he says, let's, let's get going together. He reassembles. He reconvenes. Uh, he sins. As a group, it's, it's whatever it is he wants to do in the world, he chooses to do it not alone. It, church. Uh, and surely some of you, particularly those of you who are on the, your church's finance committee or the stewardship committee or the trustee, you'll agree with me that sometimes the hardest part about following Jesus is, is getting saved as a group. Uh, I teach an introduction to ordained leadership class for first-year seminarians. And what used to be I would assign individual papers and all. Well, now what I do is I, I assign them into small groups of four. And assignments that I used to have, maybe one do, you, you do alone, I have them do as a group. And they got to come up with a statement about what we believe about baptism as a group. They, they've got to interview uh, people in various kinds of ministries as a group. And uh, every year on class evaluations, they, they tell me they hate those groups. <laughs> they... they the, Vain thing in the class they don't like. And they will often say to me dumb things like, uh, I, I didn't choose to be in a group with these people. Th these people are not in my denomination. These people, I don't like some of these people. Some of these people didn't do what they were supposed to do. 
on, on the paper, and I had to do all the work, and uh, I just don't like, and I said, this is called church. <laughs> this is getting you ready to spend the rest of your life working for Jesus with people you don't like. It's called church. And I can tell you, uh, when I was bishop in Alabama, People sometimes ask me in the early days, what do you miss most about your life in academia as opposed to your life here as a church bureaucrat in Alabama? <laughs> and I thought about that, and I came up, my answer was, you know, the thing I miss most is the Duke University Office of Undergraduate Admissions. Because through their work, they, they, they require essays. You have to get letters of recommendation. You have to produce your history, a transcript. You have to be examined psychologically. And it was wonderful because it meant that I got to spend every day, all day with people just like me. And... <laughs> Oh, they had different races and cultures and nationalities and all, but we had all been equally successful at working the American educational system to our personal advancement. And it was wonderful. We had the best discussions. We, uh, on all, we agreed. But in the church, <laughs> Jesus won't let us have an admissions committee. We got to work with anybody he drags in the door. <laughs> and you won't believe some of the people he's able to love. <laughs> and shove them at us and said, I loved them. Now you try it <laughs> in my name. Uh, as a bishop, as a bishop, I... One of the sad tasks was to receive the credentials of clergy who called it quits. And, you know, you'd think some of them would, like, call it quits because of Jesus. Because, uh, well, he's demanding. And you'd think somebody would say, I, just, I can't take it anymore. When I was younger, I could do it. But now that I'm, I'm older, I... He just raises the bar every Sunday, and he's too demanding, and the, the, the work is it's just so hard, and he that love your enemy stuff and all that. And, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, no. No Methodist minister has ever handed in credentials because of Jesus. The, the reason clergy called it quits is you, <laughs> the laity. They love Jesus. They just can't stand his friends. They, they, you are the problem. Um, it's called church. Uh, extra ecclesiam nulla salus, the church taught. No salvation outside the church. And when you first hear it, that, that sounds kind of arrogant. But uh, maybe it was a humble admission that nobody comes to Jesus by yourself. There's nobody here that was walking along in the woods and meditating upon things. And nobody here who, who said to yourself, wow, I think uh, a Jew from Nazareth, who lived briefly, died violently, and rose unexpectedly, and then returned to the same losers who disappointed him the first time. <laughs> I think he's God. I think he's the whole truth about God. Christianity, you can't do Christianity solo. You've got to, everybody here, if we had the time, could tell about how you had to receive this faith from the hands of somebody else. Somebody had to love God and love you enough to 
hand it over to tell you the story. Uh, there's, there's nobody here that like drifts into the gospel. Uh, no, you, you got to be brought here. You got to be taught here. You, it's, it's called church. Um, extra ecclesiam nulla salus. And, uh, and from the first, you can read it in the gospels. From the first, it hadn't been easy to get saved as a group. Uh, I figure, what, half of Paul's letters are about unity, are about trying to keep it together in the church, uh, refereeing in disputes, uh, calling out people, uh, trying to keep things together. From the first, it has been hard to get saved in this way. Uh, my own church, as some of you know, is going through a time of declension and division, which is always easier <laughs> than like together. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we got people who are saying, I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm just tired of the arguments and uh, I'm tired of the debates, the unpleasantness at the meetings and the voting and I just, uh, I, I just, I cannot worship Jesus with these people who have a very different view of Jesus than, than I have. I just, I want a church where some things are not up for debate, where we're all on the same page. I want a church where we're all together and in love and I say, look, if St. Paul didn't know how to create a church like that, I know you can't, okay? <laughs> it, it, it from the first, it, you, uh, but also, it's a challenge, yeah. It's one of the hardest parts about being church. It's why it's so much easier to like love Jesus at home alone. Sorry about you who are joining us on virtual worship. <clears throat> Remember, it's called virtual worship. It's not. Anyway, uh, the, uh, but admit the challenge is what the, the gifts, the gifts, the, uh, I remember uh, asking someone, what do you love about your congregation? What do you like about your congregation? And she responded, <laughs> you, you think I would pray for my enemies alone? <laughs> you think I would do that without being pressured to do that by the church and my fellow Christians? Uh, you, it, everybody here is here because somebody else handed it over to you, told you the story, lived it in such a way that you said, I'd like a life like that, uh, argued with you and pled with you. And, uh, well, uh, my, my own church uh, has disaffiliated uh, from the United Methodist Church because we love the Bible more than the rest of you, or uh, we, we don't want to be uncomfortable when we come to church and uh, at all. And uh, I, I said, well, I don't either, but we do like it to be biblical, and that's where the trouble starts. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but, but I, I thank God I didn't grow up in that church. I, I grew up in a church where we heard things routinely from the pulpit that uh, that we didn't approve of. It wasn't the way our families saw it. And uh, we, uh, I mean, I, I'm glad that I was in a church that was where gradually, you know, I, I got to hear some truth that I couldn't have heard in any other way without church. And, uh, Jesus is just too difficult and demanding to, to try to do it solo. One of the greatest 
verses in all Paul's letters, uh, a friend of mine says, is where he says, uh, uses the Greek word allion, uh, translated, put up with one another. Put up with one another in love. I love that. It, a command, put up with one another in love. How different. I've, I've got to say to you Methodists here, and I'm not going to air dirty laundry of the Methodists in front of all these others. We don't want them to know about that. But I've been so impressed by Charlie's leadership here of this wonderful church. You know, and as I have observed it in a couple of conversations with Charlie, you know, Charlie kind of says, look, uh, hey, sure, church ought to be a place where we have discussions and debate, and uh, church uh, ought to be a place where we, we air our disagreements with one another, we listen to one another, we try better to understand one another, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad for church to be that, but you will never vote anybody in this congregation out of this congregation, uh, and no matter how fierce the debate gets, you will always come to the Lord's table together. It's called church. Uh, well, I, I got a call from a preacher when I was bishop, and he said, Bishop, we uh, glad to have you coming to our little church uh, this weekend. Uh, there's a teenager that I've been counseling uh, before baptism, and uh, he, he said, I thought it'd be so cool if the bishop could baptize him, and I said, oh, that, that would be wonderful, and he said, oh, great, great, he, he said, he's just a great kid, and uh, <clears throat> we, uh, and uh, he wants to be baptized by immersion, wham, put down the, I said, what, what? hello, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, I went to the church there in the middle of a big cornfield in Alabama. Here's a little white church, and, the, and there on the steps, the pastor, and there was a little boy standing next to him. And I went up, and I said, oh, Jason, it's so good to be, be what an honor to be part of your baptism today. And he said, uh, have you ever done one of these before? <laughs> And I said, B -b -b baptism? He said, I mean the real way, by immersion. And I said, oh, I've read about it. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, and he said, well, I'd feel better if we'd have a rehearsal. <laughs> and uh, I said, that, I was going to suggest that. I was going to suggest, good, good. So we went in the fellowship hall, and they borrowed a font from the Baptist. And uh, there in the fellowship hall, and... Um, he said, do you want me to take my shoes off? And I said, yeah. I said, socks? I said, well, I leave the socks on. I, I, and uh, we, we went through it and all. Then we went back to church, had a service. I preached on baptism. The church sang. Then we all processed behind the cross from the sanctuary over to the fellowship hall, gathered around fellowship hall. So I said, well, great to be doing this baptism today. And uh, uh, Jason. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say to the church uh, before we do this? And uh, he said, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to say something. He said, uh, you know, first of all, I just want you all to thank for putting up with me. Uh, I know I wasn't the easiest when I was a kid uh, in Sunday school. And uh, thanks. Because, you know, I wouldn't be here if you hadn't put me here, uh, I didn't know anything about Jesus, but, but y'all kept telling me about it, and occasionally I paid attention, and, 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 it, and I didn't know how to be a Christian, but I watched some of y'all, and I thought, I'd, I'd like to look like that when I grow up, and uh, thank you. He said, you know, when my mom and daddy got a divorce, I just thought my life was over. But then you taught me that you were the family Jesus wanted for me in the first place. And uh, thanks. And this won't tell you, uh, I'm going to make you proud. 
And I'm going to show you that all the stories you taught me and all the things you did for me, and that uh, it, it's, it's going to pay off uh, with me. Well, I'm weeping profusely at this point, and uh, Jason says, can you get yourself together? Uh, and I said, yeah, yeah. I said, let's, let's go on to the font and all. Uh, do you know how kind of un-American that is for a group of people to take responsibility for somebody else's children? Do you know how unusual it is for uh, a life to be formed and called forth by people who are not paid to do that and do you, do you, that, that you're not related to? It, uh, it, call church. Well, excuse me, God. I hate to be a... You know what? I have got a few things I want to say. I want to get it off my chest. And I'll just say it once. But too many folks are getting in the way. I tried so hard to serve the kingdom. So many ideas, so many plans. But every time I think it's going to go just right, something goes crazy and all out of hand. I think it's maybe James and Donna and Roger and Robert and Simon too. They just don't seem to get it. Don't seem to get what I and some others are trying to do. So if you could please somehow interrupt them and show them the what's going on. Make them humble. Make them cooperative before our chance is gone. Oh, if you could change them, I'd be grateful. We could move on with what's to be done. What's that? You don't intend to change them. <laughs> and you think I'm going to be the one. <laughs> okay, okay. Get up off my knees. Got some phone calls to make. To, to cantankerous, fussy people who don't get it at all. <laughs> and that's the risk I'm going to take. And the first thing I will say is I love you. Even though I really don't believe. And the next thing I'll say is, let's work together. And you've got some ideas I need to receive. God, I hate to be a, you know what, I've been pretty stupid all along. So forgive me, 
and accept my repentance. And may our communion be ever strong. Forgive me and accept my repentance. We all do now gather around this table, not my table, not a Methodist table. This is Christ's table. He has set it, and he has extended an invitation to all people to gather around it today. And so we're going to use some words of liturgy to bring us into that moment, and then I'll have some instructions for how we're going to um, receive communion later on. But as we gather here, we do remember that it is Christ our Lord who invites to his table all of those who love him, all of those who earnestly repent of their sin, and all who seek to live in peace with one another. So therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another as we join together in the words uh, that come up on screen. No, they're not going to come up on screen. Well, I'm going to lead us then in, uh, in that prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. And so forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We take a moment in silent prayer now, friends, in which we bring our own confessions before God. So hear the good news today that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Jeffrey, do we have any slides? We have no slides. Well, then we're going to do this a little bit different. We're going to give thanks for, for the gift of Christ in our world. We're going to give thanks collectively today for the creation that God has given us, for the creation that God has called us to steward, for He has made all things. He created us in His own image. He breathed into us the breath of life. And when our love failed, his love remained steadfast. He spoke to us through the mouths of the prophets, of course. And he leads us to this table today together, where we remember that on the night on which he gave himself up for us, Jesus was gathered together with his friends, and he took a loaf of bread. And giving thanks for it, he blessed it and broke it. And gave it out among his friends, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, that night after supper, the scripture tells us that Jesus took a cup, gave thanks for what was in it, and gave it out among his friends. He said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of, of, of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. And since that time, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ from all over the world, from all of our denominations and other denominations have gathered around tables like this and moments like this to remember the extent of God's love for us made real in Jesus Christ, and to remember the extent of God's mercy and forgiveness towards us, given to us through Jesus Christ. Since then, Christians have been called to gather around tables like this, just as the bishop reminded us, 
together. And so that's what we're going to do today. In a moment, I'm going to invite those who are helping me serve communion to join me at the front, and we will serve one another here. And then we're going to create six serving stations across the front of the church here. We're going to have ushers that are going to be directing you and guiding you uh, forward, and we're going to invite you to come forward, and we will receive communion today by intention. That means we will tear a piece of bread and give it to you, and, uh, and then as you take that, you can dip that bread into the juice and receive that together. When you have received um, communion here, we invite you then to return to your seat by way of either the center or the far side aisles. If those who are helping me serve now could come forward. So friends, the table is set. The invitation is extended to all of us here. And I do say to you, if you require gluten-free elements today, please just indicate that as you come forward. We have those in these glass plates behind, and those are in the form of single-serve communion elements.
Everybody's got a hungry heart. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Lay down your money and you play your part. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Oh, that's the truth now. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Lay down your money and you place your part. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always as you go forth in his name together. Amen. Matter at all, oh, the little quarrels and part.